Nighthorn are one of my favourite armies in Age of Sigma. They're totally unique, they were new for the setting and they have some of the best models around. I jumped at the chance to collect these spooky boys when Soul Wars was released. Today I'm going to quickly run down my collection and I'm going to show off the new Nighthorn hero, the Scriptor Mortis, giving you some tips for painting him and any other ghostly models you may have. Leading my army is Lady Alinda, the Mortark of Grief. Mine is slightly converted because I left off for painting and then subsequently lost the banshees that she's meant to travel with. The plus side is that she's more secure, so a net neutral I think. Helping out Lady Alinda is my Knight of Shrouds on a horse. This was one of the first models I painted for the army, and I love the pops of colour that I gave him on the flame parts. This colour ended up being really key to my army scheme, and I'll show you how to paint it later in the video. I also have a converted Rykonor the Grimhaler, who is made using the wings from a Necron Void Dragon. You'll see where Rykonor's original wings ended up in a bit. Rounding out my mounted heroes, I have a Dreadblade Harrow. These come in a unit of two, but I've only painted one. Nighthorn have loads of really interesting on-foot characters. They add a lot of variety and colour to the army, and I have most of the available models for the Knight of Shrouds, the Lord Executioner, the Spirit Torment, and the Guardian of Souls, as well as the newer Krulgast Cruciator. It's really nice that there are multiple sculpts for these, and I would really love some sort of customizable hero set for the ghosts. The newest hero for the Nighthorn is the Scriptor Mortis, who releases this weekend, and I'll be painting him to match my army in the second part of this video. Moving on to the units, we start with a unit of Hex Wraiths and a unit of Spirit Hosts. These are older models that were brought into the Nighthorn, and they don't always hold up that well. I think that they both add something to the aesthetic of the force though, being larger infantry and cavalry in a sea of little guys, but I would like to see either an updated or remixed version of that archetype in the future. I have around 30 Chain Rasps in my army, a mixture of the standard guys and the Underworlds warband. The Underworlds models in particular are really characterful. My favourite is the guy who is holding his own skull, a classic spooky boy ghost move. There are four or five larger infantry units that the Nighthaunt have, and they each have their own skills and niches. Grimgust Reapers are really quite big models, and I have 30 to make a huge block. Bladegeist Revenants are my favourite of all the infantry models. Their poses make it seem like they're really swinging those big swords around. Dread Scythe Harridans are tormented banshees with knives for hand and roses in their hair, amongst the most metal of all the units. And finally, Manworn Banshees and the Glaive Wraith Stalkers are really unique units that don't get enough love in the game. The centerpiece model of my army is my converted Void Dragon. Here is where Reichnor's original wings went, and he also has a converted base, and I filled in a lot of the digital and necron looking parts of the body. I call him the Void Crystal, and I have a whole video about the process of making him last year. If you would like to see more, check out my channel. That's it for my Nighthaunt army. In the second half of this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a couple of details on these models. Firstly, the greeny white main army colour, and then the neon yellow green fire details. The main colour of the army was shamelessly stolen from Mango Miniature's stunning night haunts, tweaked a bit to make it easier for a more novice painter to get an army done. Starting from a Corex white undercoat, you will need to paint the whole body with Nihilac Oxide, which is thinned roughly 50-50 with Lamian Medium. I mixed up a whole pot of this for doing this army, which saves loads of time and makes things more consistent. When this is dry, thin down some dark green shade with medium a bunch. It's probably two thirds medium and one third shade. Use this in the darker areas of the model, and I sometimes like to paint it lightly on the ends of the scrappy wispy bits as well. Finally, I dry brush the white with Ulthwan Grey, being really careful not to get it into the deeper parts where I put the shade. You can really take as long as you need with the dry brushing bit to get it just right. More if you want white, less if you want more green. 
Next, we're gonna look at the neon yellow slash green fire on these models. This is a really great color to add to this scheme to bring a pop of neon and color to them. Uh, and I really enjoy painting it as well. So the first step for painting the fire is to paint everything that's gonna be fire with Hex Wraith Flame paint. And this is a technical paint that is designed for use on Night Naught models. You wanna give the whole model one coat of Hex Wraith Flame. When this is totally dry, uh, you want to use Ulthwan Grey and paint it onto the higher areas of all of the green sections. The amount of Ulthwan Grey you use here really changes the colour. If you want a greener flame, use less. If you want a more yellow flame, use more white because all of the white parts will be what turns yellow in the end. On the Scripta Mortis, I also painted the lantern in this colour, and I made sure to paint the middles of all of the squares of the lantern with Ulthwan Grey. The final part of this process is to use the Lamentus Yellow Glaze all over the parts of the fire. If you don't have Lamentus Yellow because it is discontinued, you can also thin down some Iyandan Yellow contrast paint. Once you've done all the steps, your fire will look like this. I think it looks uh, really good. It looks like a really nice, vibrant, neon, yellowy green fire. So I've painted in the rest of the colors on the Scripta Mortis and finished off his base. He's a really cool model and I has some materials on him that aren't in a lot of the other Nighthaunt models, uh, like bone and paper, as well as I use an actual fire color for the candles, just for a change, and I thought that the candle flames would be too close to the green fire to stand out. I think he looks amazing in the display with the rest of the army, adding another characterful hero to the sea of spooky sheets. So thanks for watching this showcase of my Nighthaunt army. I hope you found some of these tips useful. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.